Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 4.09, and in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the FX chain. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to show you how the FX chain works, and then I'll talk about how I use it or how more often I don't end up using it based on my own particular style. But for a lot of people, these FX chains are lifesavers, and they use them all the time, and it's one of the ways that people come up with some really unique and creative effects that only they have have access to. So what are we going to do? Well, let's just first of all load it in here. And I've already picked a loop, so I don't have to go through the process of opening this up. So let's let's go ahead and play this back. I'm going to put the mix down to zero, and let's hear what we get. OK, so obviously it's just running in and it's running out. So we don't have that problem of the FX layer where when we bring it in and if we have nothing going through it, as I can of course show you here, we get no sound. And of course, if I put the FX chain in front, we're still not gonna get any sound because we have the FX layer, but you can see the signal flow and the signal processing here. Okay, so that's the first thing and you have to be very aware of that um, and be very cognizant of what's happening when you actually are turning this mix knob. So how does the FX chain work? Really simple. You just have to click this FX area at the top, and now you can load in as many effects in a row as you want. So we're back to working in a serial configuration. Get that back through your head. This isn't parallel. This is serial right here. So let's go ahead and, I don't know, we'll drop on, ooh, too many choices, too many choices. We'll drop on the flanger for right now load in some kind of preset just to make our lives easier. So we have something crazy, LFO, flanger, negative. Okay, cool. Let's take a listen to this. And right now with the mix all the way to zero, despite this knob being at mix 100%, we're not gonna hear anything. So we're gonna have to slowly start to fade this in using the FX chain. And here's where you have to kind of make your first choice. Do you want to mainly control the mix values in the effects themselves or with the FX chain? For this example, we'll do it with the FX chain. And so what I'll probably be doing is basing everything off of this first flanger, which is up to 100%. So here we go. Okay, so I kind of like how that sounds. Now what I can do is I can go in here, I can close this flanger up. I'm happy enough with it. I double click it, I can close it all the way up. And now I can add another effect. So maybe after the flanger, I wanna run it through a reverb. And again, let's just get a preset to start with. It really doesn't matter too much what we use. I kind of like this courtyard in Minsk. Okay, and now that I've set my mix where I like it in the FX chain, I'm gonna have to use my mix parameter here in the reverb to try to set it as I'd like. Okay, I kind of like that, that's really cool. Let's go ahead and maybe load something else in. Let's load in one of these rotary controls. I wonder if this actually gives us any presets. Let's do slow full rotation, why not? And then we'll just back it off a little bit. Okay, so what we have here is an FX chain, and we're running from a flanger into a reverb, into a rotary, in serial configuration. All right, very cool. So now what happens if I add in another FX chain? 
Of course, I can do it. And now we could start building up a new one. But the important thing, the very important thing is to realize that these are running in serial. And how can we tell that? There's a real easy way. If I drop a tool in here at the end, and I take my amplitude and really crank it down, you're gonna watch and see that as we move into this FX chain, you can see that coming out of this FX chain, we're getting almost nothing. And so we're mainly hearing our clean signal because our mix isn't all the way up to 100%. If I turn this mix up to 100%, we're gonna hear almost nothing. Okay, so you need to keep these things in mind. I hope this is making sense. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments because this is the critical, uh, these, this is a critical signal flow path that you have to understand in working with the FX chains. It can be a little confusing, trust me. All right, so we'll leave this mix at 100%, for example, and I'm gonna bring the amplitude back up. And now in this FX chain, Let's put in a delay. And let's see what we can come up with. And again, the important part to be watching here is that this mix knob is all the way up to 100%. So what happens if I go and I turn this mix knob down to zero? Hopefully you guys can hear what's happening. And basically we are just bypassing this FX chain. And this is gonna be very important because remember we're running in serial. So if I change the order of these FX chains, it is going to make a difference. These aren't parallel lines running. These would only be parallel lines if we were working with the FX layer and not the FX chain. So just to really get that point home to you guys. Um, if I switch the order of these based on the fact that I'm using a delay, you need to really listen to those delays to hear the difference. Right now, our delay is occurring after all of these effects. So the delay is taking into account all of these various effects. And now I'm gonna switch the order. Let's just let it play through once. Okay, and now let's listen to it when I switch the order. Right, and if I put it back. Right, where that rotary goes really makes a big difference. And that's how you can really hear that these are working in a serial configuration. Okay, so how often do I use effects chains? If you guys are curious, I honestly don't use them very much. I almost always am working with FX layers and working in parallel because once you start to work in with an FX layer, for example, every time you create a new instance here, every time we create a new chain, this in essence is an FX chain. It's just not called that. So if I'm in here and I load up these three effects, it has basically the exact same impact. The only difference is that we have a global mix control here. So controlling the mix of our effects within the FX layer, within like the chain of the FX layer actually makes more sense to me because I have a volume control slider here where I could 
completely shut it off or bring it in. Yes, we have a gain control here, but to me, that's kind of, I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same way. Um, so I always tend to use the FX layer. Now, for a lot of people, the FX chains are incredibly important because they'll save them into their library and then you can pull them back whenever you need them. Again, I also tend to work really from scratch every time I start a project. So when I'm working from dead scratch, I like to build things up again, 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 and oftentimes then I don't ever find the reason to save anything into an FX chain. That being said, that's just me. And the way I do things isn't the right way. It isn't the wrong way. It's just my personal way of doing things. And that's one of the reasons why for me explaining the FX chain, uh, I may not do the best job in the world with it. But for those of you guys who are going to be constantly wanting to pull your own unique effects that you've created, the FX chain is a great way to go. And for live performance, the FX chain is also really, really useful. And I'm going to explain exactly why that is in the next video. So thank you for watching. And you'll hear from me again then. Take care.